to do the embroidery on the Kimberbell Cuties table topper for June, and it calls for a watermelon and a bit of ribbon or some scrunched up green fabric for the rind, and I'm not real interested in making that. I want to make something similar to that. So I am here in my documents folder, embroidery, Kimberbell, Cuties Table Toppers, and I am on the Watermelon folder. So I have in Brilliance Essentials opened, and I'm just going to highlight, I'm going to use the PES file for my Brother Embroidery Machine, and I'm going to grab it and just drag it over and drop it on the screen. And then I'm going to minimize this. And I want to take a look at it right now and see exactly how large the design is. On the Embrilliant screen, you can highlight it in the Objects panel over here on your right. And it will give you, it says Select it. It'll give you the size. So it tells you the hoop is the 10 by 16 that I'm going to use with the Luminaire. And the design is six and five sixteenths by seven. But that's the entire design. And that includes this placement line right here. Well, I'm not going to be stitching the placement line. So I'm going to click off of this. And then in that D selects it. And then over here in the plus sign, I'm going to click that. And this gives you all of the elements that make up the object itself. Okay, so here is all of the design as a whole. So right here, I'm going to highlight this. This is the stitched placement line. I don't need that, so I'm going to hit delete. I just hit the delete key on my keyboard, and that made it completely go away. And now when I highlight the watermelon, I can see the design is five and seven sixteenths by six and a quarter. So that gives me the true size of the design. Now, as I said earlier, I don't want to use this particular design. I, I just don't care for it. But there is another Kimberbell design that will work. And I have the CD for Kimberbell's Penance and Banners. So I'm going to come down here to my folder list and open this back up. And I'm just going to come back this way in the breadcrumb trail and go to Kimberbell. And then I'll come down here to Penance and Banners. And I'm going to open that up. This is the PES file. This is what I copied over from the CD itself onto my laptop. And here is the watermelon. And I would want to choose the watermelon that is closest in size to what I have right here. And what I really need to do first, because there's a bunch of elements inside of each one of these that I do not want, and it can be kind of confusing. So what I'm going to do is come back over here to Embrilliance, and I'm just going to click on this icon right here for a new tab. And that'll give me a blank slate. And now I can go ahead and open up that folder for the pennants and banners. I've been playing with this, so I know that the large one is closest in size to what I want. So I'm going to pull this over and just drop it. And now I'm going to minimize this. Now, what I want is just the watermelon. I like the words, but they're not going to work for me in this instance. And then I do not want any of this part of the design. This makes up a pennant and banner. So I'm going to click the plus sign here to open everything up. And whatever I don't want, I'm going to highlight it. And I can see exactly where it is. And I'm going to hit the delete key on my keyboard. And I'm going to go through this and highlight everything that I don't want. This is the placement line for the fabric. There's the tack down for the fabric. There is the top stitching for the, the watermelon. There is the inner rind, and there is the outer rind. Those are both satin stitches. Here's the little juice, and here are the seeds. Now here are the words, and I do like the words, but the problem with the words as they are now is that they are a single stitch. I can't 
split them up. I can't do really anything with them if unless I wanted to get into maybe in brilliance enthusiast stitch editor. I'm just not interested in doing that. That's going to be way too much trouble. So I am going to use the words, but I'm going to put them on separately. So I'm going to highlight the words and I'm going to hit delete. And then here, this is the final stitch on the pennant and banner, and I'm going to hit delete on that as well. And what that does is that leaves me just the watermelon, and that's exactly what I want. So I am going to control A to select all, I hit control A on my keyboard and not over here in the objects panel, but over here on the picture, I'm going to right click and copy and I'm going to come back over here to the original design and I'm going to say right click and paste. And you can tell I got real close with the size. So this blue circle up here, this is a rotation handle. The rest of these, you would change the size. I'm not interested in doing that. So I'm going to take the rotation handle and I'm going to grab it and I am going to put the top line of the watermelons about parallel. And I'm just going to grab this and I'm going to put, put this rind, the top of the watermelon, right up on there. And then now I can see I can grab this back corner right here and make it just a little bit bigger. This is going to work out really well. That's real cute. Look at that. That is close to perfect right there. I can resize as I want. I don't want to get too much bigger, but I think that's going to work out well. So now what I'm going to do, you can see right here in the objects panel, this is number two. So that is the new design. I'm going to scroll up and I'm going to highlight number one, which was the original design. And I'm just going to hit delete on my keyboard. There we go. Now I know that the watermelon is in the right orientation and it's the right size as the original pattern. So in Brilliance makes it really easy to do that and to play with that. Now I do want to add my words, so I'm going to click on the A right here to create letters. And over here, Designs by Juju has a great font called Summertime, I think. Summer fun, summertime, let me find it. It's called Summer Playhouse, and I think I want to use the one inch font. And there it is right there. And I'm going to go ahead and type Summer Lovin. With the apostrophe and the exclamation point, and I'm going to hit enter. Excellent. So there's a couple of things here. One thing I want to do is to curve this, but first of all, we can see that in this particular font, the apostrophe is not an apostrophe, it uh, comes out as a comma. That happens occasionally. So with this, what you can do is you can just grab this on the green box and that will move that one stitch right there. And that's perfect. And I'm going to use this uh, rotation handle and I'm going to turn it just a little bit. Let me get a little bigger so you can see. See how easy that is to just move that one stitch? That looks great. I love that. Now what I want to do is I'm going to highlight the letters again up here in the objects panel and that gives us on the letters tab in the properties box We've got multi-line text, single line text, and curve. And right now, I am, I'm on a single line, so I want to hit the curve button, text on a circle, and you get two choices. So once this tells you what your font is, and if I play with the radius right here, that's going to make it curve like it was going around over the top of the design. But what I want to do, I want place on bottom because I want the summer loving lettering to take the place of what would have been the green fluffy little ribbon right there because there's space in the design for that. So I'm going to click 
place on bottom, and now it automatically curves. So I'm going to drag it over here, and I'm going to use my rotation circle over here, and I'm just going to kind of play with this until I get it about centered and curved exactly the way I want it. That's perfect. I think I want it just a hair smaller. You always want to start with the size of design that is very close to what it is that you are going to end up at. You don't want to do too much of a resize, otherwise you end up with distortion in the stitches. I think that's perfect. I, I like that. I like that a lot. I think that's just wonderful. Let me back out. That's great. Oh, and see what it did? It moved my little apostrophe. Let me get a little bigger. Get this. I'm going to move that back up here. When I, when I did some curving, things happened. Now, I don't know where my rotate. There's my rotation handle. I had to zoom in on that. Okay. Is that right? That looks good. Okay, I'm finished. So I'm just going to go ahead and file and save stitch file as. And oh, you can see I've been working on my chickens. I'm going to save this as June Summer Lovin'. All right. And it is in the PES file format for my machine. If you have a different type of embroidery machine, you would just click the drop down arrow there and pick your file format that you need because Embrilliance works with every kind of home embroidery machine. So I'm just going to click save. Perfect. Now it is ready to go to the machine. Okay, it is time to do the applique embroidery on the June topper, so the watermelon. I have got my design printed out. I printed it from Embrilliance, and I'm using the Monster Snap Hoop from Designs of Machine Embroidery and the Dime Hoop Mat. So I am putting this kind of eyeballing center. I've got my ruler tapes on the hoop uh, head itself. We'll get that. Um, it doesn't have to be exact because I'm going to use the camera to place it exactly where I want it when I take it over to the machine. Hold on, I need a target sticker. Let me put this over here. So I am not uh, going to put any stabilizer in the hoop. This really doesn't need any stabilizer because I've already backed the white fabric with Pellon SF101, so it's going to stand up really well to the satin stitching in the embroidery design and you're just going to see uh, the embroidery you know uh, bobbin threads and whatnot on the back again i don't care what the back looks like so that doesn't really matter to me because this is going to be laying on top of a table so what i'm going to do is take my design and i'm going to place it and center it exactly where i want it on the white part of the triangle where these are going to go and all I'm going to do now is fold it in half um, there are crosshairs let me show you there are crosshairs on this printout right here so the embroidery software from Embrilliance prints crosshairs and I just trimmed it down to about a quarter of an inch away from the edge of the design all the way around so I'm just going to put this here where I think it's going to look great. It looks fairly centered. I'm going to fold it over in half and then fold it over in half again on the crosshair. And then this is a Designs and Machine Embroidery Target sticker. It's got a little arrow to tell you which way is up. I need to remember which way is up. Uh, this is the top of the design up here because it's, it's on point. So now I'm just, let me zoom in see if you can see. I'll do it on this side so you can see. All right. So let me mark this so I can remember what's what. This is the top of the design. I put a T for top right there. I want this placed on point in the corner like this. And I think that that's going to look okay. It's all right that the juice goes up onto the uh, inner border. It 
Uh, I think it does anyway on the original, but I just want to make sure that all my lettering is not in the red at all, and everything looks like it's going to be about right right there. So I am going to fold this over like this. I've already pre-folded my template, okay? And then I'm going to fold it down like this. So I've folded it in quarters. And then the dime target sticker has a little arrow to tell you where the top is, the top of the design. So I'm going to place one quadrant of the target sticker under the corner of the center of the template. And that's not quite right because I'm doing it upside down for me and right for you guys. But here you go. So that's right. That tells me where the design needs to go. That's the top of the design. Okay, so there we go. Now I've got my target sticker in place. Now to hoop this, I want to make sure that most of my topper goes over toward me at the machine. So I'm just going to put it like, I need to get it as close to center as possible. I think this will work. The base of the hoop on this, uh, get it centered in my hoop mat. And I want this as close to center as possible, but I also want it to be where it's gonna also have enough frame to capture the edge. I'm gonna put this on here, I'm gonna hold it. I'm gonna hold it with my body. There, hooped. These things are great, you guys. It doesn't have to be exact. Again, I'm going to um, align it with the camera system on the machine. I'm over here at the machine and I have got the quilting table attached. If I'm gonna be doing applique, I really like to have that on here because it's just easier to slip the hoop off and be able to iron right here. I've got my little Cricut Mini press underneath uh, on the table down here and it's heating up. So this is the A arm. It's got a little A right over here. And I am just going to pop in the Monster Snap Hoop from Designs and Machine Embroidery. And I've already got new threads, thread colors loaded in. Great. All right, this looks great. So I'm hoping I can do this without it telling me I need to move it around in the hoop. So I need to tell it what threads to use. And in the back back here, I've got my watermelon pink on spool number one, my rind green, the dark green on spool number two, the light green on spool number three. Four is empty and I will be using the black back there, that's spool number five. The design is on a USB stick, so this is the main menu, and I'm going to go to USB. Where am I going to get it from? There it is, right there, June Topper. I'll touch that, and I'm going to hit Set. So we are in an edit mode right now, and I don't need to change the size. I'm not going to rotate it. I'm not going to do anything to it, so I'm going to hit Edit End. And now we are almost to the embroidery. So here are three spools. I'm gonna to touch those. And I'm gonna go through, this is the sequence of all of the stitches right here on the left. And then these numbers right here correspond with the spools on the back of the machine. Number five, I have anchored as black. And number six, I have anchored as white. This hand right here means to stop, which you use for applique. And then we have do not stitch and then the okay button. There are eight color changes or eight thread stops, I should say, in the design. And then this is a little preview window of the stitch that it's about to make. And then we are on stitch number one of eight. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through each one of these and assign a thread color to that particular stitch, and I'm gonna tell it when to stop. So number one, the very first thread stop, the first thread stitch out, 
is the placement line for the watermelon piece. I want that to be spool number one. So I touch number one and I'm done with it. Now this is kind of backwards, so this is going to stitch and I want it to stop afterwards when it's done. So you'd think you'd tell it to put the hand here at the end of the one, but that's not how it thinks. It needs to stop before it does the next stitch and before it does the second stitch, so I'm gonna go to stitch number two, I'm gonna tell it to stop and it puts a little hand up right here so it's instead of stitch then stop on number two it's stop then stitch it's backwards and so once you get that in your mind it's really really easy to kind of think through how that's going to work this is the tack down line for the watermelon piece and i do want to tack it down to make sure that it's going to tack where i want it to and i don't have any extra hanging out too far i want that to be on spool number one okay and then once I finish with that, I'm gonna go to the third one, and before it stitches this, I want it to stop. And I want it to stop so that if I have to do any kind of micro trimming, I can do that right now. And if I don't need to do any trimming, which I'll be able to see, then I can just go ahead and tell it to go onto the stitch part. But I want that to be in color number, uh, off of spool number one and the rest of it is just straight stitching and it will change all of its colors itself. So this is the light green, which is spool number three. There is the dark green and that's spool number two. There is the juice, that is spool number one. There are my seeds, that's gonna be spool number five in the black. And number eight are the letters, and that's going to be spool number five as well. And that's it, and I'm finished. So I can tell it okay. And now what I want to do is I wanna take a picture of everything to see where it's gonna stitch out. So I'm gonna to touch the camera, and it says it's gonna move the frame. I'm gonna tell it okay. All right, so the first thing I need to do is rotate it. So I'm gonna hit rotate, and I wanna go 90 degrees this way. I'm gonna tell it okay. Can I move it now? Yes. Look at that. That looks pretty good. What I'm looking for is to make sure that right over here and right over here, I've got about the same distance from the red fabric and I think I, I like it. Let me go down just a little bit more. I think it looks good. Now, what I need to do, and you can kind of see the target sticker. So I'm gonna hit the magnifying glass and tell it okay. Oh, look how close we are to that. That's great. I'm gonna go, that looks good. Close enough for government work, you guys. I love it. I'm gonna tell it okay. It might be too far. I don't know, I'm gonna move it up. There. I think it'll be happier like that. I heard something go knock, knock. <laughs> I don't want it too close. I like it. I'm just gonna hit embroidery. And we are ready to go. It's going to take 21 minutes to stitch out. Look at that. So I'm gonna to touch lock and go. It should stop before it starts the next stitch. And it did. I have my watermelon piece here. I'm just gonna pop this off. 
and I've got my little ironing pad from Embroidery Garden. And I'm going to take this and iron it on. And this is my Cricut Mini Press. This is so much fun. Oh my goodness. I love it when my power tools work well. Okay, that looks good. You want to make sure when you put your uh, hoop back in that these little, this little pin right here and the, the hook right here, all you can see the two pins. You want to make sure they're in tight. Otherwise, your registration will be off. I'm going to hit lock and go. It's going to do the tack down. So it's going to stop just to make sure I don't need to do any extra trimming. Now generally a satin stitch, uh, for a final satin stitch is three millimeters. That's industry standard for embroidery. This is within three millimeters of the tack down line. I'm totally fine with it. So I'm just going to go ahead and tell it go and it's going to finish up everything else it needs to do. okay and take it out oh that turned out just adorable look at that that's awesome look at that how cute is that okay three more and it'll be time to bind it